Hey guys, Cypony here. So, with the release of FL Studio 11, I was thinking I should make some tutorials. By the end of this video, you should be able to export an audio file. I also show how to upgrade from FL Studio 10 to 11. Uh, the reason why I'm making these videos is because a lot of tutorial videos out there are long, they're discouraging 25 minute segments, sometimes even longer, and they have a lot of unnecessary filler material. I will attempt to get the points out quickly and efficiently, but I'll also explain what everything does and everything I'm doing, and I'll try to keep every video within 10 minutes or less. I'll also put annotations in my videos, usually at the very beginning, saying exactly where everything is, as well as having labels in the description and time codes saying exactly where everything is in each video. I also know a lot of people that have actually purchased FL Studio, they've opened it, they've loaded a project or something, and then they got discouraged with what they saw and they just quit and they gave up. Uh, so that's one big reason why I'm making these tutorials, to show people how it's done. So now we can go to the website, so we can load your favorite browser, <laughs> and now we go to imageline.com, image-line.com, and we go to FL Studio, which is very top left, and we go to FL Studio, and I might as well sign out to show what it looks like if you're not signed in, so you just go to location. Most of you are going to want to order download, but what you have to do is press demo. You have to actually download the demo and then register it. So now just select image line server and when you click it, it'll download the exe, you run it, you just install it like a normal program. So once you do that, you can go to back to where you went for FL Studio and you can actually order the download now. Each of these explain what they have, so you can just read through those. Uh, so what you do is you just add the cart, order it just like any other online product. But then what you have to do once you order the products on the website, is I log in, is you have to download a registry key. And then when you run the registry key, it instantly tells all the demos in FL Studio, now you own these products, now they're unlocked. So what you can do now is go to my account. It's at the top near the right on the same bar as where you went to FL Studio. And go to Unlock Products, which is the third option on the left bar. And all you have to do is click the link, and it downloads a registry key. And we open the registry key. Uh, Windows might complain about it, but it's, it's trusted. So are you sure you want to continue? Yes. And now all those products are now registered and no longer demo versions. So now what we should do is actually open up FL Studio. So I'm going to close whatever I had open right there. And if it doesn't show up here, you may have to either go to all programs and find it. It might be right there. Or you have to go to my computer and just browse it the old fashioned way. I go through program files x86. And yeah, by the way, uh, there is no 64-bit version of FL Studio 11, at least not a stable one. There is a beta test, but for your own benefit, uh, the 32-bit version is the way to go for this. I believe Ableton Live is now fully 64-bit. Not sure. I might do Ableton stuff in the future, but for now, I'm just going to cover things in FL Studio because it's what I'm used to. So I think this is a bit different. I believe the compatible memory... FL Studio is the one that uses less memory and is more efficient. The older versions of FL Studio had extended memory. So with that being said, I'm going to run the regular FL.exe. So it'll load this up. It's not that different from previous versions. Uh, the font's a little different. But some of you, when you load this, it's going to load this huge project file. If the file doesn't crash on you, then you can go to File. To create a new project, you can go to File and go to New from Template and then go to Minimal. And then I usually select Empty Project because I like to start completely from scratch. It's just what I like to do. Um, so you do that. And once you do that, you can just go to File New and it'll load the previous template when you make a new project. I think that's pretty cool. However, if you are having a problem where somehow that uh, default song doesn't load, and I think it's a pretty cool song too, you have to go to where the fl.exe is, then you go to data, uh, you go to projects, and then templates, and then minimal, and this sort of reflects that menu that I just showed, and then you go to empty, and then you 
before you click this, if you had FL Studio 10 or a previous version, you have to associate FLP with FL Studio 11. So you have to go to Open With, choose Default Program, find where FL is in your x86 program files. So you go to Image Line, FL Studio 11, and just select the default one and OK. And when you click OK, it'll load the template. A couple things before we start. Um, I'd like you to go to View, which is the middle option on the top left bar. And Close All Windows and Close All Unfocused Windows is very useful when you have a lot of things open, you're doing a lot. Uh, closing All Unfocused Windows will close everything except for the one thing you're looking at. It's very useful. And memorizing the shortcuts F12 uh, might be useful as well. So what I'd like you to do is go to Arrange Windows and go to either default or alternate. And it puts everything in place for you. So what you're wondering now is how the heck do I move the FL Studio window? Like, oh, this won't move. And then you try minimizing it and it's like, oh, it won't move. Well, what you have to do is you have to click the top left corner, the FL Studio logo and drag it around. I know it's annoying, but that's just how it works. So let's get right down to making something. So right here in the top left corner, you're going to have a sampler. It's going to say sampler. And what we have to do is replace this with an instrument. So we're going to right click, replace, and we might as well just replace it with the uh, FL Studio keys. It's just a piano. Uh, I wouldn't touch anything here, but you can preview the notes here. So you're probably wondering how the heck do I place notes to play back and eventually export to an audio file. What you have to do is right click the FL keys where you replace the sampler and go to piano roll. And now in here we can start placing notes. Uh, these correspond to uh, the notes that are being played and you can also preview them here. And when you place notes they also preview. So, so we'll just make something here. Just a little melody there. So you can technically export your song right now, but there's one more thing you have to do. What I'd like you to do is go to song mode and then go to the leftmost option here on one of the panels, and there's a playlist, and this is where you place all your patterns to construct your song. So what we can do here is just click. And sometimes it'll say, please select pattern. You select pattern one, which is the first pattern you created. And now you can place the patterns wherever you want. So just to show how this thing works, we'll place it twice. And if you select song mode up here right next to the play button and press play. It'll play whatever you played. And once it gets to the end, it loops back. So now we're able to export. So we'll go to file export and just mp3 file but first we have to actually save the project so what we're going to do is file save as and we're going to go back to our projects and we're going to save it as my first song dot flp and i'll just overwrite what i did before uh now you have to export the mp3 so we'll export as my first song dot mp3 you can see that i tried it before uh, so now here's something that's kind of important. The depth here is 16 bit by default, but the default for FL Studio for a project is 24 bit. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to select dithering. I'm gonna post a link explaining this exactly, but I'm also gonna explain it in future videos because messing this up could compromise your entire mix. I like to put the bit rate to 192 and we'll click start and there you go confirmation sound and this should be exported so what we have to do now is go to your projects we'll start from here and we'll go back to our projects and there's the mp3 and there it is so if any of you have any suggestions for what I can do better, what I can do for future videos, uh, I really appreciate the feedback in the comments section below. And I'll try to get better with this and I'll show you a lot more cool stuff along the way. I'll see you later.